everybody. So this video I'm going to talk about something that really, really annoys me about modern day cameras and camcorders. And it has to do with how these devices retain settings and date and time. For example, when you take out the primary battery. Let's say you have multiple batteries and your battery in your camera has died. Well, this one don't want to come out easy. It wants to give me a little bit of difficulty. But, for example, you take the battery out. You're thinking, okay, how does this um, how does this maintain date and time? Well, it has to do with a little bitty cell like this right here. For example, this is an ML621. It's hard to see. There we are. ML621, I think. Anyway, it's a tiny little thing. And the thing is, these little batteries, it's a rechargeable lithium ion cell, 3 volt lithium ion cell, actually, that's typically buried deep with inside the camera so that when it dies and doesn't take a charge anymore it's very difficult to replace most of the time it's nearly impossible to replace because well most cameras they have them soldered to the motherboard or to the main board see so used to be cameras whether it's um, a picture taking camera like this Canon here or a camcorder like this um, Sanyo over here Older cameras from way back, like mid 2000s or older than that, it was more common to have replaceable primary um, time retention batteries. It's a little bitty um, lithium primary cell that could be replaced pretty easily from the camera exterior, not requiring you to tear into the camera. Now, I don't really have any examples here at the moment to show you, but I used to have a Canon camera, or actually, it was two different Canon cameras. Uh, way back in the day that took double A batteries just to put it in perspective how old they were you would open this up here and it's, you would actually have um, the SD card slot you would have the slots for your two double A batteries and there was an extra slot in there that housed the primary lithium cell for keeping date and time so that when it failed or when it died you could replace it and I have replaced one before in one of these old cameras and it was just, it was so easy to do so the thing is that really irritates me is how newer cameras like all of these three here they have this little guy or something similar to it buried deep with inside the camera it's so ridiculous I mean seriously come on um, because what happens is when the little battery goes dead, anytime you have to change your battery out in your camera or the battery goes completely dead, your camera will lose date and time. In fact, in some cameras, it's even worse. For example, the camera I'm filming with right now, the Sony Handycam CX220, which you'll get to see in a moment, and also this Sanyo Zacti CG20. Not only does a little timekeeping cell retain the date and time it also retains all the settings for the camera so when it dies and you pull your battery out to change it out the camera loses the date the time and the settings so you have to go in and change back all your settings and sometimes it can take minutes to do and sometimes you might forget one and you go to shoot a video and I'm like oh crap I forgot to change that resolution back it's, it's so annoying um, now, it is technically possible to change these little cells. Matter of fact, I've done it in this Zacti camera once already, and guess what? Well, the replacement is already starting to go bad. Because if I take the batteries out of this camera for more than a few seconds, it will lose track of everything. And I have to go in and reconfigure the date, reconfigure the time, reconfigure the settings, like the shortcuts for this this little button here. Reconfigure my uh, my resolutions. All that stuff is so aggravating. Now, this example here, of course, has been 18650 modded. More or less, I've replaced this, the stock battery with 18650s. Now, this one was a pretty easy one to do because it's just a 3.7 volt camera. Now, the camera I'm getting ready to show you was a bit more complicated because it's a 7.4 volt camera. 
But anyways, I'm going to show you an example of how I fixed, well, this one first. I should note that the timekeeping cell is, of all places, inside the viewfinder or the uh, compartment where the LCD screen is. So changing the timekeeping cell in this camera, you can get to it easy, but it is actually soldered onto the main board or the little accessory board in there by two surface mount um, tabs that you have to be careful to remove and careful not to damage when you're uh, or careful not to damage the pads on the board so it's still pretty difficult to do not something that is easily changeable for example or re replaceable like old-fashioned cameras where you could simply swap out the lithium primary battery Okay, so now I'm filming with the same new camera, and y'all can probably see why I don't use this camera much anymore, and why I've since I retired it and switched over to using this Sony Handycam. Much, 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 much better video quality. But I want to show y'all something I did to the Sony Handycam here. So, of course, as I mentioned, it's 18650 modded, and the 18650 mod was a bit more complex. I had to retain the original battery pack. Um, the actual cells are no longer in there. I 3D printed little cylinders to replace them. I'm just retaining use of the stock BMS board. That way it monitors both of these cells as they're in series and make sure they're balanced. All that good stuff. Um, not something I recommend doing if you are not uh, knowledgeable of lithium ion chemistry. It's a bit more advanced of a modification. But there's a second modification I've done to this camera. And you can see it right there. This right here is the replacement timekeeping cell. So the wonderful engineers over at Sony, I mean, you got to love them for pulling these stunts they went as far as to actually bother to install the timekeeping cell in a socket on one of the accessory boards matter of fact it is on the board that houses the memory card reader so it's on the other side of that so to put it in perspective that's where it's at that's how far you have to dig into this camera just to get to it. It's a pain in the butt. It's ridiculous. Um, it's like, okay, why would they bother socketing the thing if they're going to bury it deep inside the camera? Again, it's something I would totally expect from Sony. Nothing less. So, this right here is the original timekeeping cell from this camera. Um, it died. It, it actually does not work at all. So, if this camera saw interruption for example all I had to do is bump these cells hard enough and it would shut this camera off because the protection in this would activate and shut off power to the camera um, again gotta have that protection there because I'm running the two cells in series but anytime the power was interrupted to this camera um, from something like that also when I am changing out batteries if I didn't plug in this USB cable into a power source like a computer, uh, this thing would totally lose track of everything, and it was so annoying. Now, the crazy thing about this camera is because since it is 18650 modded, the way it's the way you change batteries in this thing is kind of funny. Uh, when you change batteries, you swap out the two cells with fresh ones, and then you have to briefly plug in this to a USB port till this light comes on which indicates that the uh, protection circuit has um, awakened from sleep and then you can disconnect it and use the camera as normal. Um, but yeah, in the case of it being a stock Handycam, you'd have just a battery pack and anytime you would take the battery pack out, it would lose track of everything. So what I did is I desoldered a socket from the board and I put in place a couple of wires and I fed them outside the camera, you know, outside the camera where um, it might be more appropriate to have a socket for a little battery. Or, you know, they could have put it somewhere in the bottom here, like a little compartment. No, no, no. They had to put it deep inside this thing. And we had to tear it all apart to get to it. <laughs> it's just like, it's a slap in the face. It's like, why would they bother putting it on a socket if you had to tear the camera apart just to get to it anyway? But anyways, um, I replaced the stock timekeeping cell with a fresh one. Um, it was like $8 on eBay for you know, one of these little things. And this thing now, when you change out batteries or if it gets interrupted, power gets interrupted, it does not lose track of date and time and it does not lose track of all its little settings. This is another camera that would lose track of everything if the power was interrupted to the camera because the timekeeping cell was shot. 
So it's it's like, why don't camera manufacturers just bother to make these things a little more serviceable? You know, the right to repair, that's a huge topic these days. The right to repair stuff. Um, it would make sense if the camera manufacturer would put a little compartment somewhere on this thing, like maybe inside here, or maybe inside here somewhere, or maybe inside here. Anywhere where you could just replace the timekeeping cell with a new one. How difficult does that have to be? Sony, Sanyo, Kodak, or whoever is making these cameras. Why is that got to be so difficult? Seriously. <laughs> but yeah, that's the little something I want to get off my head. Um, and I want to show you all this little mod I did to this camera. Um, now, I do. I think I do have a video up on the channel of doing the 18650 mod. I did not get on video doing this mod. Now, the reason why I got this all wrapped up like that is, well, one, to protect this little cell from the elements. But, number two, the socket was a little damaged. It would not keep the uh, battery um, secured in place on its own. So, I will put a little piece of heat shrink over it and zip tied it to make sure it remains, um, the battery remains down in the socket. So far, it's worked just fine. But, yeah... How ridiculous is that? So, anyways, that wraps up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for watching this video from QCareer Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and tick the bell so you get notified of a new video I post. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. And share this video as well as the channel with your friends to get the word out. In addition, I have a second YouTube channel that's QComp MTDX. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.